was Jeff Sorrell's idea and just goes absolutely ham on this round. They're not. They're not. Ham sandwich on this round. So. Post it up in the middle uh, again. We got Alex going to tend with uh, not not a real injury. He's just checking up on somebody who had hurt himself earlier today. Just making sure he's icing it down, stretching it. It yeah, seems. Sean Smith for Towson getting checked out by Alex right now. Ah, uh, shot clock violation. I mean, WKU is falling asleep, and that's all there is to it. At the same time, this gives them a lot of chances to catch since all of the balls will be coming at their face in about uh, 10 seconds. Uh, well, I mean, Jazzy, you're what? You're going to throw maybe maybe six balls on this on this go? If, if, if not, maybe four. Like three or four. And it was only two, in fact. So JMU with a huge ball advantage, and I just got hit by Alex with his hand out of dodgeball, of course. <laughs> well, people at home don't know. <laughs> Open palm slap. <laughs> JMU cannot get the ball that just, ooh, wow. Well, a little fancy uh, handwork managed to get the ball that was across the neutral zone. And WKU waiting patiently for the one ball that's probably going to come their way. Zach Kelsey, number 77, WKU going down. WKU looking a little demoralized, holding some knees, getting a little cramped up, it seems. And Big Bird goes down 64 for WKU. So as, as soon as WKU walks up or tries to do a counter tag, the Dukes just run at them, and then, it, the, I mean, it's over. You can't backpedal as fast as someone's running forward. One note Number eight here. goes down, too. One note here, Ben. Uh, unless I am mistaken, and Debbie and Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think that this might be Big Bird's last game ever playing for WKU. I think, I think he's finished with school uh, this May. I could be wrong, uh, but if it is, what a career for the former WKU captain, Alex Sorrells. Sounds to me like they might switch up strategies after, uh, after half, which will be... Hopefully a much more entertaining uh, uh, half after this. Plus, WKU will have the advantage as they will have the net behind them, so they should have more balls to throw. Hopefully, maybe, maybe they just throw as much as they possibly can and then just see what happens. Just see. Can't be that bad. About three minutes left uh, in this first half. Looks like it's going to end potentially about 88 the being same caught. as it did with, uh, at the U.K. tournament with WKU being down 3 nothing at halftime, currently down 2-0. About eight or nine, ten people left. Better than 16 nothing, am I right? That's right. So, Alex, you just had a brief word with um, with Big Bird. What, is, what, what, are you, what are you guys talking about over there? Uh, I just relayed the message from his father, and uh, he said that next point, which uh, obviously will be next half, we're sitting at two minutes, 30 seconds left in the first half. He said that uh, Western's going to change something up, and he just looked at me, said, we've got an idea, and winked at me. So that could mean anything. Coming from Sorrels, might have been like a casual dinner invitation directly to me, or it might have actually been something about the game. I'm not sure. Big Bird full of mysteries here. And, uh, Debbie just confirmed for us that Big Bird, Debbie Sorrels just confirmed for us that Big Bird's next game will be on the alumni team. So oh. that's one thing that you really, uh, you know, if you're not paying Good attention and thinking about it, you might not realize is that for a lot of these players, it is their last time ever suiting up for their university playing college dodgeball. So. Um, obviously not the way Big Bird would have liked to end his career, but still, what a great career nonetheless. Hey, he's still an, an illustrious career in trampoline dodgeball with the Bourbon Ballers. Yes, yes, sir. Right, yes. Right. Ultimate dodgeball prolongs your dodgeball career many, many years. As we Shortens the life of your joints, though. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, if you guys didn't realize, there is a semi-professional dodgeball um, league that is around the United States. It's uh, at Sky Zone. Um, it's on trampolines, much smaller than this. The balls are smaller. The court is much, much smaller than this. And hey, it's also on trampoline. It makes for some very entertaining TV, but I would have to say, and I'm going to be completely honest, I would say college dodgeball is probably where majority of the skill lies 
in the dodgeball community. I don't think that if the people that are really good at that ultimate dodgeball came here and played, that they, they would still be good, but I don't think they would be the best team here. I, I just got to be honest about that. Yeah, I think the best collection of dodgeball talent in the world right now is in the Preston Center at WKU. Except for the teams that have already, that already, already left to go back home. I meant collectively this weekend, but yes. <laughs> we don't have to split hairs here, Alex. Come on. No, I mean, a couple of teams, I think they, already, they, they, they left their cars running. They were like, we go in, and if we get eliminated, we're in the cars on the way home. Some, you know, upwards of 10 hours to drive back home. Yeah, so. Michigan uh, State teams, or Michigan teams in general, um, I remember going up to Grand Valley my junior year, or my sophomore year, it was an eight, nine-hour drive to, uh, to Grand Valley. So, I mean, they made that here, and, uh, I, I mean, what, uh, JMU's in, in Virginia, so that's not, a, that's not a quick drive either. No, it is not. And one of the things that's always kind of bummed me out a little bit about the way that Nationals is set up now is you whittled it down to two teams in the final game. That's your championship. That's your marquee. It's what the whole season is built toward, and no team, most likely, besides those two teams, is going to want to stick around and watch that game. So. All right, and that is the end of the first half. Uh, no points scored that round, so that puts JMU still at two, Western was zero, so we'll be back for the second half of this game.